Can't beat a bit of Kim Wilde, can you? Just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Very wonderful. Now, I got very excited um, when you uh, were just talking about the uh, uh, the last thing there because um, you you've showed me a little story. So so, and you held this up and said, if this was the original, mm. it'd be worth six thousand pounds. And I nearly fainted. This record, yeah, I don't know if you can see it on the webcam. Um, yeah, it's a, a by a Northampton band called Dark. Yeah. And they recorded an album in the early 70s. And yeah. it never really saw the light of day. There were some test pressings or some a very limited run. 30 or 40 of them were pressed. Yeah. And the last copy of one of these albums sold for £6,500. That's amazing. Um, and it was sold by a bookshop in Northampton. It wow. Come in with some stuff. And it's... It was one of these records that's received cult status because it is so rare. Yeah. And the the front cover photograph was taken in Ardington Road, in fact, the road that um, Bob Harris grew up in, actually. Wow. And they don't know the name or the whereabouts of the lady that's on the front sleeve. Now, is that an original that you've got there? Unfortunately not, no. This is a reissue. A reissue. And when did they reissue this? It's... It was reissued about two or three years ago by an Italian label. Right, and They've okay. done a really good job on recreating the sleeve, and there's nice heavyweight vinyl in that. Yeah. But I say, the original, I mean, the chance of ever seeing one again is, is remote, to say the least. Um, and I say, worth six, seven, eight thousand pounds if another <gasps> one come up. Yeah. That's amazing. It's one of these records, because such a mystery's brewed up around it. Yeah. When one does surface. Yeah. Everybody just goes mad for it. So who was in the dark then? Because they were obviously Northamptonshire men, were they? They were. Yeah. And um, the, the band members were Steve Giles, Ron Johnson, Clive Thornycroft and Martin Weaver. And uh, Ron Johnson is now a manager for the user support service, I believe, now. So right. Yeah. OK. Excellent. Mm. How exciting. So we'll play one of the tracks yeah. from it. And now which side is this one? Because it's, it, it's got a lovely picture picture uh, label so we'll do side okay. a how exciting yeah we'll play oh yeah we'll play this one from side a actually this is called maypole because all the tracks are quite long being as it was in the prog rock era yeah so uh, we'll okay so when were they around when was that early issue? 70s 70, early 70s 71. Yeah. okay all right well, maybe somebody saw them i think they did a few gigs didn't they they did they didn't do many gigs at all okay no. there. shall we put the needle yeah, on the record please do okay there we go we're nearly there Well, we will. 
here on the radio yeah. um, and uh, if you've got a copy of that what's the t- it's called Dark and it's called the, the al- album is called the album's called uh, the group's called Dark the album's called Round the Edges and if it's an original copy which come in a very flimsy sleeve the, the reissue's in a lovely gatefold right um, anywhere you could say safely if it's a good one anywhere between five and ten thousand wow yeah Gosh, yeah. that's a that's a lot of dosh, isn't it? It for, is a lot of dosh. For a it bit is a lot of dosh. Okay, um, Richard in Bedford said, "My mum has a copy of Pink Floyd's The Wall. It came in an envelope style case that I believe was printed or made in Bedford. Just yeah. wondering if this has any value or is it just a really good record? It's a fabulous record. It's a really good record. If you've got a nice copy of The Wall that's in lovely mint condition, you're looking at tenner, ten to twelve quid. It was a massive seller. And you're right, the sleeve was printed in Bedford. If you you drive out of Bedford on the A6 heading towards." You've got the Sainsbury's on your left-hand side, and that site is where... I can't remember whether it was Garrett and Lofthouse or Ian J. Day, but they printed record sleeves. Uh, and at the bottom of many 60s albums, you'll see Garrett and Lofthouse or Ian J. Day. Um, and, and it was on that site there. So if anybody can tell me which company it was or whether one bought the other out, I'm not mm. sure. But I'm sure, I'm sure it was Ian J. Day. 